not, not just physical death. When we say die, dying, death, think spiritual death. Alienated from the life of God. Breached from the life of God. That's death, biblical. Isn't that wonderful? Thanatos, yes, that's the Greek word, death. So he said, he that believes into me. How many of you believe into him? I'm not talking about mental assent either. That's a huge deception in the church is mental assent. Yeah, I believe. Believing is a verb. Action, brother, yes, sir. Believing, if you study it out and really look at it, believing is a verb. I believe. I, we are believers. Huh? It is not a mental assenting to. Faith is of the heart. It's not of the mind. It's of the heart. He bears witness, not with my mind, my spirit that I am a child of God. Boy, isn't that good. Huh? Huh? So he that believes in me, the Greek word in is in too. It's not, yeah, I believe in him. No, I'm be I, believe, I believe and exercise faith into him. I'm baptized into him. I'm immersed, he, he, I'm immersed into him and he has immersed himself into me by his immersion called the Holy Spirit. Huh? The same spirit that raised up Christ from, the Greek word ek, out of the dead. There's that term we're talking about, the dead. If that same spirit, listen, dwells in you, you following me? dwells in you, has active residence, he, that same spirit, the Bible also calls it in Romans 6, 4, the glory that raised him. So the spirit is the glory that you can't separate them. It's just different manifestations of the spirit. Huh? The presence of God, the glory of God. It's all the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you could call it grace. Grace. If that same spirit dwells in you, he will, listen, make alive. There's the same thing he did for Jesus. Make alive your mortal body. He'll keep me alive and whole until my course is finished. And then, listen, then I don't die. He that believes in me don't ever die, he said. Then, listen, we, we'll call it what Paul had revelation to this. Then I depart. Listen to me. This is huge. If we can ever lose our fear of dying, that is massive. That is the root to all fear. Hmm? Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah. It, 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 it's the fear of dying. Would you ever bungee jump? No way. And I'll tell you right now, no way. There ain't any three men in here could push me off that cliff. <laughs> huh? They get shot. They look like Swiss cheese when I finish shooting them, try to throw me off a bungee jumping cliff. Why? Why? Afraid of dying. You see what I'm saying? Now, if Jesus said, <laughs> listen, they, they, the, the, the devil out here, I, I'll be scriptural. Thank you, Lord. He said, throw yourself off the pinnacle. I mean, jump off. He said, mm, it is written. <laughs> you don't tempt God. <laughs> he said, mm, nope. <laughs> but then other times he had to trust God, and he walked right through the crowd that promised him his death and to stone him. Listen, the next time, though, he hid in the crowd in his detail, they ushered him out. So it's all about what is God saying? What's God telling you to do? See, even when you ask others, y'all be praying for me, you're the one that's going to hear God. If I hear that, it's just to bear witness with what you're hearing to confirm you are hearing God. But I'm not going to, listen, he didn't say they that, are, they that are led by the pastor are the sons of God. The pastor has certain leading and, and ought to, the pastoral anointing is the one to lead you to still waters and, and green pastures. But when it comes to daily 
decisions and being led by the Spirit of God, that's the Spirit of God that you have to hear. Huh? He that's led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. So, but, yeah, so he that believes in to me, he shall never die. What is dying? It's to be separated from life. You see, it's not the cessation of life. It's the separation from life. Isn't that good, y'all? Huh? Yeah. Paul said to be absent from, listen, we, I'm going to ask that we start getting more aware of this. I believe God wants me to just put this out there for the last couple of days. Let's quit calling it my body because there's a couple places Paul said, I bring under my body. So he, he has revelation. I am not my body. My body, he calls it in Philippians and 2 Corinthians also, he says, it's a tabernacle that I live in. But it ain't me. I'm looking at you out of windows. Huh? I am a spirit. I have a soul that I'm in process every day of renewing more to who my spirit man is and, and all the new things that have been made in Christ. They're in my spirit. Huh? But we live in a body. It's called a tabernacle. Peter called it a tent. Huh? And Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he lives. Because, listen, that life the, the, that union with the resurrected one, the firstborn from the dead. Interesting in the Gospels, he's called the only begotten. Paul never called him the only begotten. He's called the first begotten. Because, listen to me, the first person that received him as Savior, now they're begotten. You don't ever find him in the New Testament called the only begotten Son of God. Only in the Gospels. Now he's the first begotten because there's a second, third, fourth begotten, fifth begotten, sixth begotten, and you're whatever number begotten. That's Bible. You, listen, whosoever is born of God, there's begotten. Isn't that wonderful? So the believer doesn't die. He departs. See, and one day there is a there, there will be the, 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 the trump of God. And listen, the dead in Christ. Listen, the dead in the anointed one. Listen, the dead in the spirit. Huh? That Word of God will make a demand and the soul and spirit that is in heaven will meet again that body and that body will be glorified or 1 Corinthians 15 would say this mortal will be enveloped with immortality. Listen to me. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he was glorified. He stepped through the door. But they didn't say, now who are you? No, he looked just the same. They knew exactly who he was. Huh? Yeah. And he ate with them. He, he grilled some fish on the beach. We know that. Didn't he? He said, children. He called them children. Do you have any meat? They said, no, we've not caught a thing. See, they'd gone back to their old way. Huh? It's amazing that you, you need to be aware that just because you don't sense the presence of God for a few days, you don't hear from God by the time you want to hear from God, don't go back to your old way. Huh? When he met them, they were fishing, and he said, cast your net on, go out into the deep. And they said, Master, we, listen, we're fishermen, you're a rabbi. 
We know what we're doing. You stick with your grace, we'll stick with ours. We fished all night and we've not caught a thing. Now listen, Jesus didn't say again, no, trust me, trust me, come on, trust me, go out in the deep. No, Jesus doesn't do that. He said once, he said, cast your nets out on, in the deep water. They said, we're fishermen, you're a rabbi. Now we respect that, but we're fishermen. Jesus is just standing there. Nevertheless, see, listen, that was an inward intuition. You need to listen to this guy. At your word, we'll let down the net. They let the net down, and they caught so much. We know the little story. The net broke. There's reasons the net broke, all that. But anyway, Jesus is raised from the dead. These men have been in training for three and a half years now, walking with him. He goes. They watch him go back up. Uh, 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 um, or, uh, uh, let, me, let me retract. He's raised from the dead, but because they've not seen him in a few days, Peter said, I'm going back to fishing. Because of Peter's influence in the other guy's life, they said, we're going with you. It's important what decisions you make when others are looking to you. And the Bible says this, and they fished all night and they caught nothing. Back to square one. <laughs> Same condition. And they, they, they're up there, and, and they find Jesus. And, well, they don't know it's him, but he's on, the, on the, he's on the beach up there, and he's cooking, and he said, Children, do you have any meat? And they said, No, we've not caught any. And then John knew it was the Lord, and Peter jumps in the water and all that. But, but make sure you don't go back. You know, what will, you know what will get the body in trouble is this. If you don't stay in faith, your flesh wants some form of instant gratification. And I'm telling you, instant gratification manifests in many, many, many different ways. And really, me turning the rocks into bread because I want instant gratification is doubting the integrity of the Word of God. It's unbelief whether we want to call it that or not. Because it's not trusting God to bring it to pass. It's me making it happen. And it manifests in a lot of ways. You getting anything? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 7. You, this, this is speaking of Adam. God and Adam here. You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him, that's Adam, with glory. There's the Holy Spirit. And honor. And you set Adam over the works of your hands. You put all things in subjection under his feet. We're speaking of Adam before the fall. For in that God put everything in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Watch. But now we see not yet all things put under him. There's the fall. Stay with the flow. There's the fall. But, verse 9, we see Jesus, a man, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. Same thing Adam had. Watch, that he, by the grace of God, should be taste death there's that word that's not physical death that he by the grace of God should taste literally death for every man he became he literally went the Bible says that he went, he said this, you will not leave my soul in hell. You can't leave something someplace that ain't there. You study, Jesus, while his body is still on the cross, his spirit is in hell. He is, he took on sin. He is, he has literally become the wages of sin itself. He is a spiritual dead man. He's the scapegoat at that point, forced out into the wilderness 
to be devoured by the beasts. His body is still on that cross when he said, it is finished, and he gave up the ghost, his spirit. No man killed him. He yielded up the ghost. Huh? But now he is a spiritual dead man. He says it is finished, so he reaps the reward for a spiritual dead man so that he can identify with all the spiritual dead men which was the whole world because of Adam put us there. So he reaps the reward. He goes to the place that spiritual dead men went. He went to hell. And you study it, there's five different holding chambers in the earth. He went to the deepest of depth of depths of the sufferings of death. Not physical death, the penalty called death. The threefold curse of the law was sickness and disease, poverty and lack, and death, eternal separation from God. Cursed is every, there's the curse. Cursed is every man that hangs upon a tree because he becomes the curse of God. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? By being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth upon the tree. Why? That we might receive the blessing of Abraham and the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is the total package of resurrection life. So Jesus went to hell. He said, the Bible says in Isaiah 42, 7, He went down into the deepest part of the prison house of suffering. Isn't that good? It tells us in Acts 2, 22 to 27, you will not leave my soul in hell. Now, this gets important. Jesus was saying that because David prophesied it about Jesus. Jesus comes from the lineage of Abraham all the way up to David, all the way up to Jesus, and we come out of Christ because we're birthed of him, which makes you a son of Abraham. You see what I'm saying? We, we, we stand with good pedigree. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Which Abraham would go back to Shem, which would go back to Noah, which means rest. Isn't that good? So he is in hell. David prophesied. Let's just read it. He tasted death. We'll, we'll end with this one. Go to Acts chapter 2. Let's read this, please. You getting anything? He tasted this thing called death for every person, all of humanity. He bore he bore the sin of Adam, but listen to me, he bore like a pack mule the sins and iniquities of all of humanity, saints. You can't imagine the spiritual weight that that is, and that began coming upon him in the garden. That's where he won the fight. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. You men of Israel hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man. We need to remind ourselves that there is a born again, isn't this good? A born again, resurrected, listen, which that means born again. It's just a different way of saying born again. We could call it this, I'm alive. Yeah, same thing. There is a born again, Holy Spirit baptized. Holy Spirit filled, glorified human sitting in the presence of God to represent all of humanity that will put faith in Him. Well, you know, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You ought to study that out some. I ain't scared. Why? Because I don't represent me now or then. <laughs> he represents me, and he'll represent me then. 
He doesn't just represent us on earth and then when we get to heaven, all right, you're on your own now. No, no, no. We're his children. Hmm? I tell you, the heart of God isn't to condemn anybody. Huh? There is therefore now. When? Now. Well, how often is now? Now. Well, that now was gone. Now we're at now. Huh? Yeah, but now that's dead. Now. Well, what about now? Right now. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> yeah, but you don't know. Now. Now it's right. <laughs> right now. There is therefore now. Right now. 24-7 now. Even now. Right now. Right now. Say now. now. No condemning. No, listen, to condemn, it would go all the way back to the word to damn a thing, to condemn. Condemnation. There's none of that to those who are in the anointed one. Well, how am I in him? That's a great question. We need to understand these things. I mean, we're doing life here, not church. How do I get in him? I mean, he's up there. <laughs> like Jesse. <laughs> Listen, it's, you do it the same way that he became the curse, the same way he received the curse, the same way he <sighs> and went to hell in the fullest condition of this thing called death. Listen, listen, by faith. The same way that you would use faith, I'm talking about if you know something about faith and you know something about your rights, because outside of that, you're going to have a hard time exercising faith for certain things. I'm talking about things you've got to have. I'm talking about they give you three months to live. You better know something. You better find out something or you better make good friends with somebody or get real submitted up under a, a ministry that does know something about it. Okay. Thank you for all those good amens. Because listen to me. The same way you would use faith that I'm talking about absolutely get a clean bill of health. That's the same faith he used to receive the cancer. Listen to me. Cancer couldn't get on God. This is this Emmanuel we're talking about. God with us. God was manifest in the flesh. Cancer can't get on him. Huh? Sin can't get on him. Let me tell you something. You know, listen, think about this. The Bible says there was no guile found in his mouth. You know why? Because there wasn't ever any guile in his heart. Listen, and that's why death, death could not get on him. He had to become sin by God before death could even get on him. <laughs> Isn't this good? I'm talking about can't touch this. That, that, was, his, that was his song, man. <laughs> it could not get on him. He had to become sin. And think about this again. The way he became sin, and Philippians 2, he became obedient unto, here it is, death. Not physical death. He became obedient unto death. He did it, listen, by faith and receiving the word of God. He knew the scriptures that were prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before this event that said, he, surely he bore our sins and our griefs. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The stroke or the blow was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. He knew all that. Isn't that good? And so by faith, and he quoted, let's end with this in Acts 2. I want you to see what Jesus said. Uh, verse 23, him, Jesus, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands you crucified him and slain him. 
whom God has raised up, watch, having loosed the pains of death. I want us to understand something. Death is not yet defeated. That's the last enemy to be destroyed. This place of separation from God. It's not destroyed yet. What has been destroyed is the pains of it. Huh? It's dominion. Yeah. It's sting. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's domain. It, it is the best word. It's dominion. Huh? Because he tasted it. Loose the pains of death because it was not possible that death could hold him. The complete Jewish Bible says, freed him from the suffering of death. Again, when we talk death, we're talking spiritual. Now watch this, verse 25. For David speaks concerning him, Jesus. Here's what David said, but this is also what Jesus said. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, my tongue was glad, and therefore my flesh shall rest in hope. Because you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You shall make me full of joy with your countenance. Those are the words Jesus literally said in that moment powerful man huh that's why the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12 1 looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of faith lay aside the sin that so easily besets you remember talks about how he did it who for the joy that was on the other side of the pain and suffering he endured the cross man but I want you to see that. He said these words. He held to those words. He professed those words. That was his confession of faith. Therefore, let's look at what happened. Verse 29, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us here today. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to David that of the fruit of his loins, according to his flesh, his pedigree, he would raise up the anointed one to sit on, watch, David's throne. Oh, this gets powerful. It really appears to me like this. I, I'm not one to give an opinion, but it really appears that Jesus will be king of the earth in the end and David will be king of Jerusalem where we are all gathered. Obviously, Jesus, king of kings. But King David has a powerful place in the end of this thing. He was the man after the heart of God. Now watch this. We're, we'll wrap this up. Verse 31, he seeing this before spoke of the resurrection of Christ, the anointed one, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. There it is fulfilled. Isn't that good? Oh, howdy. I want to say this. If the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead... Though we age, we can age gracefully and he can keep us from corrupting. I didn't say our old, th this outer man is not going to age, but corruption is a different thing. We've been redeemed from corruption. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Verse 32, this Jesus has God raised up whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, watch this, being by the right hand of God exalted. Now we're talking about Jesus, our high priest. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he, Jesus, has shed forth this which you now see and hear. Verse 36, therefore let all the house of Israel know without doubt that God has made that same Jesus 
whom you have crucified, both Lord, that's yud heh vav -Hey, Jehovah, and anointed one. Mm -mm -mm. Now when they heard that, they were stung in their heart. And they said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's a great question. I want to go back, and we'll end with this. I want to go back to verse 26. What Jesus said. This went off in my spirit so big last night, and I want to sow it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, take the Lord's table. Verse 26. Jesus is in the pit of hell. He's in the de deepest depths of, of suffering. Verse 24, whom God raised up having loosed the pains, the sufferings of this thing called death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Verse 26, Jesus says, therefore did my heart, say heart, heart. rejoice and my tongue, say tongue, was glad, therefore my flesh or my body rests in hope, knowing that I will not experience corruption. I want to say this. Your heart is where faith is. That comes to a place that it gets in your tongue, and your heart and tongue have everything to do with your flesh resting in confident expectation or not. My heart rejoiced. My tongue was glad because my heart's glad. Huh? Therefore, my flesh shall rest in hope, which is confident expectation. Isn't that good? It's always in that order. Heart, tongue, then this guy. Because the heart of man is your spirit man, where the whole same spirit that raised Christ lives in you there. Huh? And it's important that you meditate these things until, listen to me, you might not feel joy, but joy from the spirit is far different than happy. Happy is a feeling. It's more natural person. Joy is a force from the spirit realm, the spirit of God that lives in you. Love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, self-control. Those are boom, man. Them are boom factors on the inside of you brought to you from the same spirit that raised up love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and self-control himself. Isn't that good? So joy of the Lord is your strength. My Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Well, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Be strong in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strong. Boy, if the devil can rob our joy, saints. I'll close this so you at least make you think we're closing now. We are. <laughs> if he can get my joy... He robs every bit of my confident expectation. Isn't that good? If he gets our joy, mm. <laughs> true. <laughs> I tell you, he wants our joy. If he gets my joy, you know where he has me? Afraid of death. Isn't that good? It is good, yeah. If I don't have joy, it's because I'm afraid of something. Which means I'm in unbelief. Whether I mean to be, we want to call it that or not, is, and the reason I'm there is because I doubt the integrity of the Word of God. And the reason I'm there, let's go to the root of it, I'm not real sure that He loves me yet. Because, because, Knowing that he first loved us, that is what casts out all fear. If fear truly, this is a big thought though, but if fear truly has place in us, it's only because we're not yet convinced that God loves me. Man, 
That's, that sounds like a blanket statement, but that's not. That's a fact. If I am afraid... If I, listen, big word, if I am worried, this is huge, y'all. I used to worry if I didn't have something to worry about it. I get it from my grand grand. Worry warts. Worry. W-O-R-R-Y, worry. 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 Fret. So I got any, can I get any witnesses in here? Okay. Worry. Just Anxious is a good word. Anxiety. Panic. But, but, but mainly the thing that I would deal with was just worry. I'm talking about from the moment I woke up. Worry about something. Just worry. What are people thinking? Is he mad at me? Did I make him happy? Just all that. Just all that devilish crap. Torment. All that gets purged in knowing and believing the love that he has for me. Isn't that good? It's not enough to know it. He said we've known and believed it, believing that God loves us. My God, look what he did for us. Jesus had peace with God. He did every bit of that for us. Huh? Huh? He took torment, man. He loves us. God loves Jason. God loves God loves Jay, Joe, Caleb, Mo, and Rocco and Harley. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you. By faith, say God loves me. He ain't mad at me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, he took his mad out on Jesus. And that wasn't a sick, sadistic thing. That was a, a plan of God thing. It was a wisdom thing. Praise the Lord. Ushers, if you would, please. How many of you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Well, that's what this meal is. It is, a, it is a remembrance of him, not a remembrance of me, not a remembrance of the sin, not a remembrance of the failure, not a remembrance of anything except him. And it's open to whosoever. Isn't that good? Brother Nate, you look nice. Thanks for being here. Praise the Lord. If you will, serve the people, please, ushers. It's a great day, Channel 3. We're serving God by serving one another. He tasted death for you and for me. I want to say something here. Death has no more taste for me. This is a big thought where they're passing this out. All the devil has is a good threat. Literally, saints, I'm not being funny. For real. Huh? The Bible says he destroyed him that had the power of death that is the devil he didn't destroy death yet he destroyed the one who had past tense had the power of death that is the devil that word destroyed means to paralyze and bring to a place of complete zero helpless all the enemy has is a big threat the Bible says there's a day coming that the saints of God will look down and say, that is what deceived the nation. That thing? That is Satan? What? I ran from freaking that? That ruined my family? What? The Bible says it. That thing had me in such levels of torment what that think about it all he has is a threat when he says ha, you ain't got no future you ought to say you know what let's talk about your future hallelujah now 
oh, you don't even know where you're going. I know where you're going. And I'll remind you of this. I've been raised up and made to sit with the anointed one, the high priest of God, in heavenly places. And because I'm part of the body of Christ, feet are on the body and you're under his feet, that means you're under me. You take your hands off me, you take them off my wife, you take them off my kids, you take them off the ministry, you take them off our money, you take your hands off my stuff. And you don't fiddle fart around with words like that. You mean it when you say it because of your positioning in Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? You're not asking him to do it. This ain't a debate. You're, you're demanding your rights. A police officer doesn't pull, over, pull you over and say, um, 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 could I see your, your license? Oh, you don't have one? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Do, do you have insurance? No. No, he says, I need to see license and registration. Yes. Let me tell you, to remind you of something while they're doing that. A cop walks out in the road, you're driving. Does he have the power literally to walk out there and stop your car? Why well, no. He don't need the power because he has the authority. He walks out there and he goes, <laughs> License registration, please. The Bible says, all authority in heaven and earth and under the earth is now given to me. Therefore, you go in my name. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Whether you know it or not, we done conquered. <laughs> He's the conqueror. That's why we're called more than conquerors. We're walking in the victory of this thing. Huh? We're the overcoming church, saints. We're not the whip broke back been over no sir we're the overcoming church the overcomers yes that good you've been called a king and a priest revelations one says now listen peter said you are a royal priesthood there listen the church is basically the tribe of Levi now and we have one called out and ordained by God Jesus he was the high priest the high priest only came out in the camp for a major outbreak or for the day of atonement that's been dealt with that's why he is there now in the presence of the holy of holies that is literally his throne is the presence of God beyond the veil and now he's letting the, the service work which was the Levites the priests now it's the royal priesthood the church has been down here doing his business for him we represent him we are ambassadors for the high priest isn't that good Somewhere you just go. Take the bread. I want, you to, I want you to put faith in it. The bread of itself is nothing. It's just bread. Probably made at Walmart somewhere. Just like oil in itself is nothing, but faith in the laying on of hands and the anointing of oil is different. But you put faith in this. This is a picture and a representation of the body of Jesus Christ, the thing that became the curse. He dealt with every sickness, every disease, and by his stripes we are healed. Huh? I will live and not die. Come on. He said, when you do this, take and eat. It is my body. It is the new covenant. The new, it's a covenant between God and Him. In the name of Jesus. Please say this with me. In the name of Jesus, my Savior, Deliverer, Healer, and High Priest, I receive the body of Christ and all it brings with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive it, please. Eat it in faith.
Bible said he did all that so that as a man, it says he be, it behooved him to become like his brethren so that he could relate to them and be a merciful and faithful high priest. It behooved Jesus to be made like his brethren. And then he said, I'm not ashamed to call them brethren. He's the eldest brother in the family. Let's hold this wonderful representation. In the name of Jesus, please say it. I receive this cup, the cup of my salvation, the, the cup of my deliverance, my healing, my freedom, my joy, my happiness, my life, my future, my prosperity, my covenant for me and mine in Jesus' name. Let's receive it. redeemed church not with not with things like silver and gold but with the precious blood of the lamb bought he bought me he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood god bless you today please hug somebody two three people around you go in absolute victory this day